Okay, so nasopharynx. Now for this oropharynx. This is a portion of our pharynx that is going to be shared with the digestive system. So if we look at this structure um, for the oropharynx, if we come over here and under our pharynx, look at what we've got right here. I know y'all, I'm sorry for it being so blurry. I'll try to make sure the rest of my pictures are not going to be like that. Notice where we've got the relationship, okay? So what we're going to find for this oropharynx, stratified squamous epithelium, all right? Do you happen to remember what that tells us? The one layer. Um, I'm sorry. I was thinking of my fried eggs. Okay, so the stratified fried eggs. Okay. The laryngopharynx. That's from the epiglottis to the esophagus. See how they're showing the epiglottis right here? This little flap? Okay, because that's what it is. All right? It's a little flap. Stratified squamous right there also. So, I want you to kind of notice something about this structure that we have once we begin, like if we think about eating something and we're going to swallow, okay? Esophagus, trachea, esophagus. See how it looks like it's kind of wavy and just simply muscular, okay? Because when we eat and we swallow, the material is, as we eat and chew stuff, we turn it into what's called a bolus, okay? And we don't want any of that stuff to move into what we would think of as our windpipe, okay? So the epiglottis is going to function when we eat and swallow the food because we need the food to move down this muscular tube so we don't need anything to be restrictive on this muscular tube. Does it look like it's got any type of harsh structure to it? No, because that little ball of food is going to be pushed down the esophagus. But now the trachea, what do you kind of see about the structure of the trachea? It's got a bunch of structure to it. All right, it's not this squishy tube. All right. So the structures, they're right, you know, they're right beside each other, anterior, posterior, okay? But their structure is very different, but they can actually affect each other, all right? But this structure for the trachea, we, we don't have the air form a little ball and get pushed, all right? Air is going to flood, so we can't have this collapse. Have you ever heard of anyone whose trachea has collapsed? All right, they'll choke. They probably have problems swallowing too, okay? And in some cases, have to go in and have the cartilage stretched and stuff. There's stuff that they can do to stretch the cartilage and stuff back out because the trachea is gonna have that. The trachea is gonna have this circular ring of the cartilage. Um, when you're performing CPR or something, something like that, don't they cut like your trachea? A tracheostomy yes. would be um, not so much the CPR as it would be trying to get the airflow going. Like if their oxygen rate has dropped relatively a lot. And so what you can do is you can cut through the trachea, put a tube in to push the air. So that's why um, a lot of premature babies they have to do the trach so that they can make that that machine is operating the flow of air in and out of the lungs. Yep. 
So structurally, we get a little interesting with the structure. Now, I didn't want to get a whole lot into the larynx, okay? Mainly because um, in your textbook, it's going to like move a whole lot into talking about like how we've got the nine pairs and the third pairs unpaired and blah, blah. I don't care about that right now, okay? Now, there are a couple things I want you to notice or understand about the larynx, all right? Now, when we think of larynx, a couple of things come to my mind, okay? My voice and laryngitis, okay? Those are a couple things that come to my mind. Now, notice that for the structure of our larynx, it looks very structured. The cartilage, all right, do you happen to remember cartilage that was present here? Because remember, we've got different types of cartilage throughout the body. The hyaline, the hyaline cartilage, okay, the real glassy, pretty, looks like little flowers embedded into the cartilage. So when we begin to look at this structure, we're going to have the area that will give rise to the Adam's apple. That's one of the cool things about this, all right? So males usually have the very, you know, depending on how prominent, but they have the Adam's apple. Okay, that's supposed to be males, but that's kind of changing now that you just say. All right, we also, in this, you know, around this area, is where we're going to find the epiglottis. We're going to also see that this is going to be the area that will house those vocal cords. All right, so the vocal folds will be housed in this protective structure. I'm sorry, I'm stuck on the So, so males, do they just have a more prominent? What is it called? They, they should not be present in a female. So females don't have one. They, no, my terminology. Should, should not have one. Should not. Which part is the, is the Adam's apple on here? Is that it's going to be point? like or this part of the thyroid part of this does little it, projection. Function, like, no, function no, it? it's just, um, to tell you the truth, I think it's a hormone thing. Like, you know, throughout puberty and everything, and tissues get affected. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but it's usually only present in males. What is it? The thyroid cartilage. The, oh. the cartilage. Yeah, because we're in a very heavily, when we begin to look at the trachea, the larynx, and so forth, we're in a very heavily cartilaged area. Now, what? Is this where the thyroid gland is wrapped around? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Because that's where they would tell you to swallow, and that's where they'll have their fingers, and they can feel if it's um, enlarged or not. But so women don't have any, any protection over their thyroid gland? Well, no one, no one does. Yeah. Because, in other words, that's, that's going to, th this cartilage is protecting internal, not external. So that is, and one of the biggest, one of the biggest soft tissues that it's protecting is the vocal cords. You know, the, the production of speech at this point. Now, I do want you to note that, like I said, we're in a very heavily cartilaged area. This cartilage that's going to be present you begin to look from this structure, basically from the larynx down, this structure of this cartilage is pretty cool. All right, the cartilage is going to be making up the trachea or what we know as the windpipe. All right, the structure that we look at for the trachea. How we're going to see or what allows for movement of air. Okay? 
trachea wind pipe. Oh no, I tried to go down the wrong pipe. Well, there is no other pipe. Okay, so if it tried to go down, it just tried to go down the pipe. Just saying. All right, so. Well, but you showed the muscle thing before where food goes. Right, so if you're eating and you get choked and people say I tried to go down the wrong pipe, well, that's just a, well, I guess you could think of it as a muscular pipe. I think a pipe is something rigid. Uh, and to me, the esophagus is not rigid. It's, it is, well, it's not. So if they say that, they're, they're thinking it's going down the trachea. Well, that's what they mean. That's what they mean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you cough and and you try to cough that food back up because the last thing you want is something moving down into that lung tissue mm -hmm. other than air. When I say you don't want anything else but air moving down there, trust me, you don't. Okay? Just say. Now, this structure, okay? The hyaline cartilage, we're making what's termed a C ring. And that C ring is going to be around this tissue of the trachea. Now, it looks like the letter C because on this area towards the dorsal portion, posterior, whatever, whatever, whatever helps you refer to it, okay? This is next to the esophagus, okay? So this is basically muscular. So the rest of this is, get, it is, is protecting or giving the structure to the windpipe, to the trachea. And it's got this really cool structure. Anything else you might note about that structure of the trachea right there? in that picture, in that same ring? The cilia, okay? So at this point, all right, I've mentioned that we've got this upper and then we begin lower, okay? I've mentioned that we've got protection so that we get to here, okay? We can swallow it down. If something makes it past that point into the windpipe and we start begin moving a little bit down, this structure that you see, this lining right here, okay, the cilia, they're beating. We got the mucus there, okay? So if we get the little particle, it's going to try to push that particle up and out. So you might sneeze, okay? Might end up coughing pretty heavy, feeling like it's a cough coming like way from down here, okay? You could <coughs> Don't completely hop the loogie, all right? Kind of get it up there and you swallow it back down. <laughs> so, at this point, okay, we are still doing everything possible to keep any kind of foreign particle from making it anywhere down into this region. Because as we begin to look at this region, 